Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to make like a magical connection between your brain and your character. <laughs> Let's get into Blender. Let's take the default cube, turn on auto keying, press space, and move it around. And what's happening here is we just recorded the movement of the cube. And it looks like this. So this is really similar to what we did in the previous tutorial, but there's just so much potential when recording motion in real time, because you don't have to just do location. Let me show you. So let me split my viewport in half, vertical split, and then set the editor type to graph editor, delete the keyframes, select the cube again, view it in front orthographic view. Let me just, so press R to rotate, and then press R again. And now you have a trackball. And this is just really cool because it's kind of a unique way of animating an object. I'm gonna try and make this cube behave like a character. And it's, it's nothing else than a cube. So I'm gonna try and give this cube life. First, let me extend my animation just a little bit. So, whoop, press space, R, R, and suddenly, Kind of feels alive doesn't it and we didn't create any keyframes on the location so let's just delete the x y and z location data and then from the side view numpad 3 let's press space again and now we can move the cube and it's kind of alive <laughs> And that's just a cube. What if you have a really detailed uh, turret model rigged with inverse kinematics and a kind of, I don't know. So let's try and animate this one. Turn on auto keying, press space, RR, and then just look around. Looking this way, this way, kind of being curious, up. You're almost immediately thinking, this robot is wondering where it is. Before we can animate the position, go into the graph editor again, open this menu and delete the location data. Let's go back to the 3D viewport, just so we can see what it looks like in perspective view. We're going to do side orthographic view. But I'm going to make it go down like it's below the ground. And then I'm going to press play. And our turret is alive. So looking around, kind of, ooh, what's that? Okay, so this method might look more fun than it is, because these keyframes are a mess. But there are some things we can do to these keyframes to make them behave more predictably. So as you can see, there are some parts here where we don't have keyframe data. Here's a good example. This isn't movement that we want. So what you can do is you can select all your keyframes, go to key interpolation mode and set it to constant. And now it's like this super robotic kind of horrible. It doesn't look good yet, right? Let's go ahead and do key sample keyframes. And then when we go back to Bezier interpolation mode, we kind of have a little bit more of an organic feel to this. It doesn't look so kind of, it's difficult to explain. I mean, it still feels like it's like a little bird. And I really like that. That's what I want to try and conserve here. It's a little bit too choppy, like right here. It's almost like a stop motion. I mean, if that's your thing, you should do that. But 
for now I want to try and make this a little bit smoother. So deselect all the keyframes and then hide the location channels. And now all we have is, I mean, you do have scale as well. You can delete them if you want, but it's not important. So make sure all keyframes are selected now. And then you can go key, smooth keys. And now it's a little bit more smooth. That's exactly what we want. Now for the location movement, deselect everything and hide them. And then let's unhide the location. And we want to make the location a little bit smoother because that's kind of like a larger joint, right? So it's kind of heavier. So select all of them, go to key, smooth keys, and then you can just do it like a couple of times. It feels really smooth. It's like the largest joints should be the smoothest. Feels right. I don't know. This is all just feelings. <laughs> now, there is one thing that is a little bit difficult about this technique, and that is if you want to edit your movement. There are two ways that doesn't involve like kind of redoing everything. So if we select the Z rotation, okay, so that's what this looks like. And top here, you can select proportional editing. So turn on proportional editing, hotkey O, you can press G, and then you can scroll on your mouse wheel to change the size and then press Y to make this go on the Y axis. As you can see, this is probably limiting in a certain way if you're used to working with keyframes. Now the second way to edit this, which is really unpredictable and I don't like this at all, but you could try it. Select all the keyframes, go to key, decimate, ratio or decimate, allow change. So decimate keyframes and then let's for example set this to ratio and you can see the further we drag this, the more keyframes disappear. And to some degree, this could give you few enough keyframes that it's easy to work with. But I'm not really sure if I would do this because you kind of lose that one-to-one -one ratio where your mind is kind of controlling the robot. So I'm hesitant on using this. It kind of takes away that little magic that happens when you're you're animating stuff in real time. Now, there's one more thing you can do that is really cool. It's gonna blow your mind. It, it blew my mind the first time I kind of accidentally stumbled upon it. So in a new Blender file, make a shape. It's kind of the head is up here and there's like this tail here and we're gonna make like some wings here. Just make like a cube. Okay, so this wing shape can be like really simple. Just like this flat, short kind of thing. Okay, so have you ever tried to animate like a bee wing or like a really tiny bird or something where the wing kind of moves like this? Let me show you. Okay, so we're going for like kind of a movement like this, right? In the middle of your scene, make like an empty. Make sure it's completely on the middle and then move this in the center of the shape. Select your shape, add a mirror modifier, set the mirror object to be the empty, and when you move the wing, oh, it's kind of flapping. So you might be thinking, oh yeah, now I can record this flapping motion like this. But there's so much more to this than that. To show this properly, I'm gonna split my viewport in half. And it's really important that the origin is at the kind of the base of the wing. So this is so cool. If you draw like a little dot here, and then you draw a circle around. It can be a little bit oval, if you like, like a tall circle. Hold your mouse in the middle, you press R, R, and then if you make your mouse follow this circle, the wings are gonna move exactly like that motion. And this is exactly as stupid as it looks. Let's try and animate this. Turn on auto keying, press space. Remember to have your mouse in the middle of this dot and press RR and then move it up and then just follow the circle. Make big motions. Huh. <laughs> I mean this bird shape is horrible <laughs> but that's how to animate wings. If you like this turret model feel free to check it out it's free. I mean you could pay for it if you want but it's free. It's a free model. Download it. Have fun with it. If you're used to rigging this, you're gonna kind of vomit a little bit in your mouth when you see what I've done with this rig, but it kind of worked for this purpose. You should be able to use this turret for, I mean, whatever you like. It has a lot of interesting details. Thanks for watching.